Hey folks, I'm editing some videos that may turn off quite a few subscribers and may attract a new and unique set of subscribers. But my point being is that I'm going to share some of my background consulting materials that have to do with high net worth individuals and affluent individuals. It's no secret that we're in some kind of a recession where things are costing more and you know, money is getting tight for a lot of people, but I want to give you the tools and insights in order for you to build your small farm or homestead. I'm Justin Hit with Ad Briefing Copywriting Tips, if you didn't recognize me, um, and we talk about how to get the most value from your land without hurting its ecological, con the, the, the concept of the land, the nature of the land, the, um, va the value of the land in not just monetary, but in wildlife species, the conservation value, the diversity of, of what uses for the land, and so ultimately that it builds your lifestyle. Now, you can do this at $50,000 a year in earnings. You can do this at $25,000 a year in earnings. That number doesn't really matter. But I was going through the demographics of our subscribers. So thank you for subscribing, by the way. But I see a lot of people that are in their 50s and their 60s getting ready for retirement. And I'm also getting a number of stories where people are looking for cheap land. Now, I look at the demographics of the people looking for cheap land, and they're often getting started, but it's a mistake to look for cheap land. You need to look for land that is affordable, that can pay for itself. Now, I'm going to have some videos about that and, and what to look at, but I'm going to assure you right now that they aren't making any more land. And if you can get land at a fair price... And what do we mean by fair price? Well, it's affordable to you. It's suitable for the, the use of the land. And ultimately, um, you can keep the land over time. So uh, you don't want to have buy a piece of land and do a lot of work on it and then have it taken away. We can also lease land or we can buy land in a business or some kind of cooperative. But again, I'm looking at the demographics of people. A lot of subscribers are going to retire soon. Now, I'm also looking at the, the psychographics. So, by the way, I have a background in business development and marketing. So, if you didn't know, when you join the email newsletter or you go to the website or you opt in, whether it's on Rumble or YouTube or whatever, I can see on the marketing side, like, an estimation of how much you earn and all that other stuff. Well, there's quite a few subscribers who earn above average incomes. So, $150,000, $250,000 a year in the US dollars. Now my foreign audience, which includes India and um, a little bit of Philippines, Canada, uh, a little bit of Europe, um, those individuals are also high affluent individuals for their current local currency. The difference is in India, the concept of living with your family or your in-laws is pretty common. I had some friends that, uh, that I worked with, they were from India, and they were telling me about this house that they had with 25 bedrooms and of course 25 bathrooms. It had two commercial kitchens. It was a giant courtyard house. And I was fascinated about it, learning about it. And I said, well, why do you have a house so big? And he says, well, we have a thousand hectare farm. And I think, well, your family must be rich. You know, it's just the dumbest say, thing to say to anybody, but the, but that's what you might be thinking. A house with 25 bedrooms and a giant courtyard and two commercial kitchens. And some of the, the bedrooms are suites. So they had little kitchens in it as well. Uh, well, they just happened to live near a city and uh, about 15, 20 of the bedrooms were um, were actually not family members. So when I'm thinking in my head, I'm thinking a giant mansion. But when he shows me a picture or describes it, it's like a motel. Okay. So essentially the house is shaped in a courtyard. All the rooms open into the courtyard. And then the workers at the farm stayed in the in the in the the places with their families, some relatives like uncles or cousins lived in some of the other rooms. And then the main family with their last name um, lived in probably about five units. So they had a couple suites and everything like that. They had kitchen staff. So they, that staff lived in some of the rooms because in India, it's, it's affordable to hire people at a wage to come and cook for you. And then their family lives there. So essentially they're running a hotel. But the concept is there and works well worldwide because it works well in the Middle East. It works well in some areas of the United States. You'll see a lot of immigrants that come here that will buy a hotel and they'll have house their family in there, even if it's temporary. But my point being is there they have a thousand hectares, okay, and they're able to afford it because they have cash flow from the house. They have lower staffing costs. They have a, a farm operation, and this isn't a giant um, 
there was a lot of monoculture crop in there as well, but uh, there were some areas that were designated for uh, habitat or designated for woodland. Um, a farm tends to be more than just a farm. It tends to have different projects going on with different cash flows. My, my point being, though, and the reason I wanted to share this personal message with you is because I don't want you to be offended. I don't want you to say, oh, the advice he gives is only for rich people because you know in this economy – that the people who are rich today may not be rich tomorrow. There can be a they could get canceled. Their business could go under because of economic problems. High inflation could cause consumers to not buy their goods and services. They might be a doctor or a lawyer or some kind of professional who suddenly finds themselves sued and 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 they lose their job. They could also be very close to retirement where they're going to go from making good six-figure income to suddenly making uh, you know, fifty thousand dollars a year. So now the time, while they have an income, is the time to buy a piece of land that cash flows, in order to to have that land ready for their retirement. It could also be a family unit that maybe individuals in the family only make fifty thousand dollars a year. And I say only because it's relative. There's some places in the country where fifty thousand dollars a year is a lot of money, but there's also places like New York, California, that if you're making fifty thousand dollars a year, you're barely making it by. But partner with two or three of your family members, and that $50,000 becomes $125,000. It becomes shared opportunity. So two things I want you to look for. Number one is how can you afford it? And number two, the value of communal family living. So we don't have large families anymore because we have seven kids, but we do have mothers and fathers who are going to have needs. We have siblings that have challenges throughout their life. Um, we have family members who might be good tenants to pay you rent or to share costs. You might have a lot of times in the Chinese community, you have a family come here and when they have a kid, the parents take turns coming here for their six month visa or whatever visa is allowed from, from mainland China. And they, the, one of the parents will take care of the kids while there's family members working at home. So they turn it to a vacation opportunity. Folks, I'm going to share some things. Um, and then review some books that my high affluent customers don't have any qualms with. But there's a lot of folks on the, on the call or on our um, on our channel whose income is not very high. And I don't want to scare you off. I want you to think, okay, inflation, you could be making $20 million a year and get one lawsuit or one stock market. You know, a lot of these people that have $20 million earnings, they're earning it in stock and if the stock market goes down, let me just point out that it's not the same people on the Forbes 100 list every year. People come and go off the list just like they do at all economic levels. You might be poor today, but you might not be poor tomorrow if you make the right decisions. So I want to share and expose you to some of these insights that help you have land that pays for itself, that helps you buy assets and materials that pay for themselves, that help you use other people's money to build the farm and dream of your if your desires or how to properly plan so that you get the appropriate things and you are able to benefit from them today without having them taken away later because you really couldn't afford it. So I know I've covered a lot here. Please comment below what you think about this. Um, you know, you don't have to tell me your specific situation because like I said, the marketing tools uh, tell me a lot about who you guys are, not who you are specifically. Um, and then if you have specific questions you want to answer privately, um, visit www.prosperityhomestead.org. Go to the contact page and ask there. Thanks for the folks that ask about, oh, by the way, here's an interesting story came through. One of, uh, one of the sub subscribers had asked about um, some things he could do acquiring land that used to be in his family. I have a huge passion if you're putting back together a family farm or you're bought an estate that you're going you're gonna to clean up and turn to a bed and breakfast or turn into your a family plantation or something like that. Um, my point being though is, is please, for your sake, please ask the how can I afford it question, be willing to write out a plan and understand that money is just numbers. There's no difference between $2 million and $20,000 other than the zeros at the end. And sometimes $20,000 buys a certain amount of things that years later, $2 million can't even buy. Think about Zimbabwe, for example. And because we're all facing this inflation and because we're all facing economic uncertainty and because we're all facing 
the prospects of war. Now is the time to be smarter and understand that profits come in many means. The safety and security of your family is profits. The ability to have food, no matter what the climate does, is profits. The ability to have choices, multiple streams of income, is profits. Your knowledge is profits. So let's invest in that knowledge by giving this content a chance, even though it might seem a little elitist, it might seem like I'm talking to people who only have a large income, uh, all that's relative. Uh, there's people on my list that I've talked to that are in India, Philippines, uh, China, uh, Middle East, uh, UK. Now, a lot of the, the application stuff, I tend to focus on temperate climate. But as far as managing your small farm, homestead, or estate, there are universal measures that will make it possible for you to live the dream that you desire and enjoy it and improve your lifestyle and have the land built for you over time. It's just so exciting. And I don't always get to share it because I was a little worried in the past that people would be offended. But a, a mentor of mine explained it. Look, uh, the richest man in Babylon uh, talks about these things and, and people were able to understand it and use it. Uh, that's a book, by the way. Um, and then people that are rich today are not necessarily rich tomorrow. People that are poor today are not necessarily poor tomorrow. And so we need to share this information. We need to help you understand these methods. And then you can scale them for your individual needs. I'm Justin Hitt with Prosperity Homestead. And thanks for listening here. I hope, hope I've given you a few tidbits. Uh, thanks for staying to the end. And again, if you have questions, uh, put them in the comments below. I'm more than happy to answer your questions. And I'll see you in the next podcast episode.